Good afternoon. This is All India Radio. I'm Anuja Kumar and with me is Sarabjit Kaur with the Midday News. The headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi urges Tokyo Olympic contingent to visit 75 schools across the country to inspire children and create awareness about malnutrition. Prime Minister to virtually inaugurate and lay foundation stone of various projects at historic Somnath Temple in Gujarat on Friday. Supreme Court passes interim order allowing women to appear for National Defence Academy exam. Over 56 crore, 6 lakh doses of COVID vaccine administered so far under the nationwide vaccination drive. National COVID-19 recovery rate reaches 97.52%. Over 35,000 new cases reported in last 24 hours. COVID-19 vaccination coverage reaches more than one-third of the population in Telangana. Assam to impose night curfew from tonight in view of spike in COVID cases. India makes new records in access and energy transition and reducing carbon footprint at an unparalleled pace, says Power and New and Renewable Energy Minister. Uttar Pradesh tables first supplementary budget for current financial year in Legislative Assembly. Bihar to hold panchayat elections in 11 phases from 24th September to 12th December. And in sports, Indian contingent to compete at World Athletics under 20 championships from today at Nairobi. As the nationwide free COVID-19 vaccination campaign at government facilities for those above 18 years is going on, we advise our young listeners to get vaccinated and also help others get vaccinated. We also advise our listeners not to lower their guard as COVID-19 remains a threat to our health. Please stay at home unless it is essential to go out and continue to follow these three simple steps. Wear a face mask, maintain dhogas ki duri for social distancing, Focus on hand and face hygiene. For any COVID-related information and guidance, contact National Helpline numbers 011-2397-8046 and 1075. And now the news in detail. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has urged the Tokyo Olympic Indian contingent to visit 75 schools by 15th of August 2023. He also requested them to spend an hour with the students at these schools and create an awareness about malnutrition and inspire them for sports. <laughs> पानी शुद्ध होना चाहिए इन विषयों में थोड़ी उदासीनता तो मैं आपसे एक अपेक्षा करता हूं कि आप एक तो खुद कॉलेज के बच्चों से मिले तो क्या बोलना स्कूल के बच्चों से मिले तो क्या बताना प्राइमरी बच्चों से मिले ऐसे तीन चार विषय तैयार करके के ऑनलाइन सब अवेलेबल होता है मैं भी आपको नोट भेज दे डिपार्टमेंट ऐसी व्यवस्था करूंगा लेकिन आप एक लेक्चर तैयार कीजिए और उनको समझाइए और मैं समझता हूं कि बहुत बड़ी सेवा है the Prime Minister has also shared the video of his interaction with the Olympic returned Indian athletes. During the interaction, the women's hockey team thanked the Prime Minister for the encouraging phone call after their Olympic loss. Mr. Modi offered ice cream to Tokyo Olympic medal winner P.V. Sindhu. When the Prime Minister spoke to Ms. Sindhu before the Olympic Games, he had told that they will eat ice cream together after her return from Tokyo. Interacting with boxer Mary Com, Mr. Modi said she has given a huge contribution to sports and done a lot for the country. The Prime Minister met the Indian Olympic contingent for a breakfast at his residence on Monday. On Independence Day, he praised the athletes for their stellar performance in the Olympic Games from the Red Fort. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will virtually inaugurate and lay the foundation stone of various projects worth 83 crore rupees at the historic Somnath Temple in Gujarat on Friday. According to the temple authorities, Prime Minister Modi is the chairman of the Sri Somnath Trust, which manages the affairs of the world-famous temple, located in Prabhas Patan town in the Gir Somnath district. Secretary and trustee of Sri Somnath Trust, Praveen Laheri said, Mr. Modi will inaugurate three projects, 
and also perform a virtual groundbreaking ceremony for the Parvati temple coming up near the main temple at a cost of 30 crore rupees. He said that the event will be organized in the Ram Mandir auditorium of the Somnath temple on 20th of August. The three projects to be inaugurated include a 1 km long Samudra Darshan walkway built at a cost of 49 crore rupees on the seashore behind the temple a newly built museum housing ancient artifacts constructed near the temple at a cost of 75 lakh rupees and the renovated ahilya bai holkar temple or the old somnath temple situated opposite to the main temple union home minister and trustee of the somnath temple amit shah will join the function through video conferencing gujarat chief minister vijay rupani and other dignitaries will remain present at the somnath temple External Affairs Minister Dr. S. J. Shankar, who is in New York to chair two high-level events of the United Nations, held discussions with UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres on Afghanistan. Dr. J. Shankar tweeted, "Good to meet UN Secretary General. Our discussions focused on Afghanistan following upon the Security Council meeting." He added, "The first event will be an open debate today on protecting the protectors." technology and peacekeeping the second event to be held tomorrow will be a high level briefing on threats to international peace and security caused by terrorist acts his visit to new york comes during india's presidency of the united nations security council the open debate including through the use of modern technological tools to enhance the safety and security of peacekeepers and to aid peacekeeping missions The United Nations Human Rights Council is to hold a special session next week on the situation in Afghanistan to address serious human rights concerns after the Taliban takeover a United Nations statement said yesterday The Geneva Forum is set to convene on 24th of this month at the request of nearly 90 other countries supporting the move it said Convening a special session requires support from one third of the council's 47 member states Backers so far include members Britain and France but not China or Russia while the United States was not among supporting countries with observer status a provisional UN list showed In Bihar the elections to the three tier panchayati raj institutions will be held in 11 phases from 24th of September to 12th December this year This decision was taken at the state cabinet meeting which was chaired by Chief Minister Nitish Kumar The PRI bodies of the Gram Panchayats, Panchayat Samitis and Zilla Parishads had to be constituted by 15th of June this year, but the elections could not be held due to COVID pandemic. The State Election Commission will issue the notifications on 24th of August to hold the elections to the single posts of Mukhiyas, Sarpanches, Zilla Parishad members, Panchayat Samiti members and Ward members. The union government has provided over 57 crore 88 lakh covid vaccine doses to the states and union territories so far. It has showed that more than 18 lakh 62000 vaccine doses will be received by the states and union territories in the coming days. More than 94 lakh unutilized covid vaccine doses are still available with the states and union territories to be administered. The country has administered over 56 crore 6 lakh doses of covid vaccine so far under the nationwide vaccination drive. Union Health Ministry said more than 55 lakh 5000 vaccine doses were administered in the last 24 hours. The ministry said 37169 patients recovered from covid during the last 24 hours and the national recovery rate has reached 97.52%. The country reported 35178 new cases in the last 24 hours. Currently India's active case load is at around 367000. The active cases constitute 1.14% of the total reported cases, which is lowest since March last year. The daily positivity rate stands at 1.96%. In Telangana more than one third of the population has received COVID-19 vaccines in the state. The state crossed the mark of vaccination to over 1 crore 65 lakh people in the state with over 1 lakh 62000 people vaccinated yesterday alone. The state medical and health ministry announced that over 1 crore 25 lakh people out of them have received their first jab while over 42 lakh people receive both the doses. Among the vaccinated over 68 lakh people are of the age group of 
18 to 44 years of age and over 86 lakh are of above 45 years of age. Assam government on Tuesday lifts restrictions on inter-district movement of vehicles due to decline in COVID positivity cases. The new standard operating procedures, SOPs, which came into force from 5 a.m. today, the new SOP reduces the daily curfew timing of 6 p.m. to 5 a.m. to 7 p.m. to 5 a.m. All shops, commercial establishment, offices, banks were allowed to remain open till 6 p.m. Inter-district movement of private vehicles allowed for all of Assam except to and from Kamrup Metro District. Inter-district movement of public vehicles remain suspended till further order. The odd-even rule for playing vehicles has also been lifted. Assam's cumulative COVID cases have surged to 5,81,398, while death toll has reached to 5,513. The COVID recovery rate in the state stands at 97.49%. National Institute of Virology, Indian Council of Medical Research, has expressed hope that COVID-19 vaccine will be available for children by next month. Director of ICMR, NIV, Priya Ibrahim said, Presently, Phase 2 and 3 trials of co-vaccine are going on for children in the age group of 2 to 18 years. Speaking on the scientific developments on COVID-19, Ms. Ibrahim said the results are going to be available very soon and the results will be presented to the regulators. She said Zydus Cadillac's vaccine trial is also going on and this can also be applied for children and will be made available. Stressing on getting vaccinated, Ms. Ibrahim said COVID vaccines are important to prevent serious forms of disease due to which patients may get hospitalized and even die. She added that recommendations for boosters will definitely come in the future. In Uttarakhand, state government will provide free medical tests at 36 health centres of six districts of the state. The fund to the tune of 5 crore rupees from the National Health Mission has been allocated for executing the programme. This programme was inaugurated by Chief Minister Pushkar Singh Dhami in Dehradun last evening. In Madhya Pradesh, an inter-ministerial central study team led by Sunil Kumar Barnwal, Joint Secretary, Ministry of Home Affairs, Government of India, to assess the damage caused by heavy rains and floods in the state suggested to develop houses completely destroyed by the floods as a model town at a suitable place. More details from our Bhopal correspondent. The central team asked officials to repair the roads damaged due to excessive rain at the earliest so that transport system will be able to operate smoothly again. The central team observed that Shiopur was the most affected, but it is satisfying that no diseases have spread due to floods here. Chief Minister Shivraj Singh Chauhan has said that the efforts are being made to restore and also improve the infrastructure affected in the flood-affected districts on war footing. As many as 2,444 villages of nine districts have been badly affected by floods and excessive rainfall. Puja P. Vardhan, AIR News, Bhopal. The Supreme Court today passed an interim order to allow women to take the admission exam to the National Defence Academy, NDA. A division bench comprising Justices Sanjay Kishan Kohl and Rishikesh Roy passed the interim order in a writ petition seeking permission for women candidates to appear for the NDA exam. While issuing the order, the court said women should be permitted to take part in the NDA exam. In Uttar Pradesh, the government has tabled its first supplementary budget for the current financial year in the Assembly today. Earlier, the government had tabled its general budget in February this year. More details from our Lucknow correspondent. Finance Minister Suresh Khanna presented the supplementary budgetary demands of Rs. 7,301 crore in the House in presence of Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath. This budget is 1.33% of the total general budget. Speaking on this occasion, Finance Minister said that the supplementary demands are taken for different expenditures in the field of welfare of Anganwadi workers, ASHA workers, lawyers, electricity, protection of cows and development works in Ayodhya including others. 3,000 crore will be for employment of youth. The budget will be taken for debate and passage tomorrow. MS Yadav, AIR News, Lucknow. Maharashtra's former Home Minister Anil Deshmukh again skipped the summon issued by the Enforcement Directorate. It was the fifth summon issued by the ED. His council advocate Inderpal Singh appeared before the ED and submitted Anil Deshmukh's statement. 
Meanwhile, Supreme Court has dismissed Maharashtra government's plea against the CBI probe into Anil Deshmukh, who faces allegations of corruption in transfer and posting of police personnel. You are listening to the Midday News on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Prime Minister Narendra Modi urges Tokyo Olympic contingent to visit 75 schools across the country to inspire children and create awareness about malnutrition. Prime Minister to virtually inaugurate and lay foundation stone of various projects at historic Somnath Temple in Gujarat on Friday. Supreme Court passes in interim order allowing women to appear for the National Defence Academy exam. Over 56 crore, 6 lakh doses of COVID vaccine administered so far under the nationwide vaccination drive. National COVID-19 recovery rate reaches 97.52%. Over 35,000 new cases reported in the last 24 hours. COVID-19 vaccination coverage reaches more than one-third of the population in Telangana. Assam to impose night curfew from tonight in view of spike in COVID cases. India makes new records in access and energy transition and reducing carbon footprint at an unparalleled pace, says Power and New and Renewable Energy Minister. Uttar Pradesh tables first supplementary budget for current financial year in Legislative Assembly. Bihar to hold Panchayat elections in 11 phases from 24th September to 12th December. And in sports, Indian contingent to compete at World Athletics Under-20 Championships from today at Nairobi. चलो दिल से एक शुरुआत करें चलो एक फैसला आज करें मात नहीं तो टोकेंगे करोना को रोकेंगे चलो एक इरादा करते हैं चलो कुछ वादा करते हैं मात नहीं तो टोकेंगे Welcome back to the Midday News on All India Radio. Power and New and Renewable Energy Minister R.K. Singh has said that India has established a new identity in the power sector and made new records in access and energy transition. He said the government has taken several steps to modernize and strengthen the sector by improving power distribution networks and installing smart grid and smart metering. When our government came to office, our country was power deficit. We made it power surplus. We added about 182,000 megawatts of generation capacity. And today we are exporting power. The availability of power in rural areas used to be about 12 hours per day in 2015. Today it is 22 hours in rural areas. In urban areas, the national average, this includes the northeast, is about 23 and a half hours. This is what we have done. The power minister said India is reducing its carbon footprint at an unparalleled pace. He said the country has pledged that 40% of the installed electricity capacity will come from non-fossil fuel by 2030. And so far, 38.5% of the power generation capacity has been transitioned to non-fossil fuel. He said his ministries and departments will celebrate the Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav by modernizing the power sector. We want to celebrate Ajadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav by doing things. And uh, what we have done and what we are engaged in doing is making the sector strong and making it modern. We have already strengthened the sector. We are going to strengthen it further. And we are going to modernize this sector in the coming decade by 2030. The interview can be heard tonight on FM Gold Channel and additional frequencies from 9.15 p.m. onwards. This program will also be available on our website newsonair.com and on our YouTube channel News on AIR Official. You can also follow us on the News on AIR app for updates. Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu expressed dismay at the behavior of the parliamentarians in the recently concluded session and said suitable action will be initiated for it necessary. Speaking at an award function in Bengaluru today, he said that the legislators should set very high standard for themselves and be a role model for others. The Vice President who holds the position of the Chairman in Rajya Sabha said that Parliament is to debate, discuss and decide and not to disrupt. Dissent, he added, is democratic but use of physical force to compel the Parliament to toe their line is not it.
Environment Minister Bhupendra Yadav has said that India is committed to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, UNFCCC Framework and Paris Agreement. He said India will work constructively for a successful and balanced outcome at COP26. The minister has extended India's full support to the UK for COP26, which will be held in Glasgow in November this year. The minister today held a detailed meeting with Alok Sharma, COP26 President-designate UK in New Delhi. During the meeting, they discussed issues related to climate change, COP26 and India-UK 2030 roadmap. Both the leaders also exchanged views on important climate negotiation agenda items to be deliberated in the upcoming COP26. The Indian Meteorological Department has issued an orange alert for Yavatmal district of Maharashtra for today. Heavy to very heavy rains are expected at isolated places in Yavatmal. Yellow alert has been issued in Mumbai, Konkan, North Maharashtra and some parts of Maratwara and Vidhavra for today. IMD has warned that heavy rains are expected at some places in these districts. Meanwhile, two women died from lightning in Chandrapur districts while nine others have been injured in Bhandara in the last two days. Lightning cases are increasing in the last few years in various parts of the country. IMD Mumbai Director Subhagi Bhute said that severe weather alert has been issued. While having a such warning, we should avoid going out. Rather, we can sometimes, we, if we are outside and we are not able to uh, not take a shelter, do not lie down on the ground and this can create a big target. But then you can take a shelter where there is no magnetic flow like mobile or you should not touch any electric equipment to avoid further disruption. In Bihar, there is no let-up in flood situation. Over 40 lakh people spread over 26 districts, including Patna, Katihar, Samastipur and Munger, are reeling under the impact of floods. Chief Minister Nitish Kumar instructed the officials to tackle the flood relief operations on war footing. Mr. Kumar directed the civil administration and health officials to take special care of the pregnant women, elderly and children affected by floods. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will share his thoughts with the people in the country and abroad in the Man Ki Baat program on All India Radio on the 29th of this month. It will be the 80th episode of the monthly radio program. The Prime Minister has invited people to share their ideas on topics he should address on the coming episode of the program. People can share their views in the Namo app or MyGov Open Forum. They can also dial the toll-free telephone number one eight double zero double one seven eight double zero and record their message for the Prime Minister in either Hindi or English. The phone lines will remain open till the twenty seventh of August. People can also give a missed call on one nine two two and follow the link received in SMS to directly give their suggestions to the Prime Minister. As our nation celebrates the seventy fifth year of independence, a series of events are being organized by the government as a part of Azadi Kamrit Mautsav. To commemorate the occasion as a Jan Utsav, All India Radio News brings its listeners a special quiz on India's freedom movement and its glorious history. The quiz will be conducted on every Monday and Tuesday in Morning News till 15th August 2022. AIR News got an overwhelming response from its listeners across the world and one lucky winner of the last quiz is Akash Sharma from Rampur in Uttar Pradesh. The next question of Amrit Mahotsav quiz will be shared with the listeners on Monday, 23rd of August. Celebrate 75 years of India's independence by participating in Amrit Mahotsav quiz with AIR News. Azadi ka Amrit Mahotsav Azadi ka safar every day with All India Radio from Monday the 16th of August as part of Azadi ka Amrit Mahotsav News Services Division of All India Radio brings to you the story of glorious struggle and sacrifices of freedom fighters on 100.1 FM Gold Channel in the English News Bulletins at 8.30 a.m., 2 p.m. and 8.30 p.m. Stay tuned.
Let's listen now to our special program Azadi ka safar. Azadi ka amrit mahotsav. Azadi ka safar with AIR News. Glorious freedom struggle is one of the greatest struggles the modern world has ever witnessed. AIR News brings you a glimpse of the struggle every day. In today's episode, we will try to recreate some aspects of Netaji's life. On this day in 1945, it was reported that the plane in which Netaji was traveling had crashed near Taihoku Airport in Taiwan and he reportedly succumbed to injuries in a nearby Japanese military hospital. Let's unravel the momentous life of one of the bravest personalities of Indian freedom struggle. Subhas Chandra Bose, endearingly called Netaji, was born on 23 January 1897 in Katak. He graduated from the Calcutta University in 1919 and cleared Indian civil services exam in 1921. That a tiger cannot be caged for too long. The free-spirited Bose resigned from civil services upon been encouraged by Chittaranjan Das to work for his country's freedom than to be a slave of the British. Bose supported Swaraj and was also of the opinion that freedom is not given, it is taken. So, he devised a strategy to free the motherland from the clutches of the foreigners. And there was no looking back. At the start of the Second World War in 1939, he initiated a mass movement under which he started uniting people from all over the country. Since there was a massive response to his call, Bose was immediately arrested by the British. While under house arrest, he planned his dramatic escape. Bose grew a beard and left his house dressed as a Pathan so that the British could not identify him. On the night of January 19, 1941, Bose first went to Bihar and then via Peshawar, Kabul, Moscow and Rome finally reached Germany where he met Hitler. He set up a free India center in Berlin and started the Azad Hind radio. This is Subhash Chandra Bose speaking to Indians in East Asia. My countrymen in East Asia, while I am in Tokyo, I desire to address a few words to you and I have no doubt that you will give them due consideration. In 1943, Bose left for Southeast Asia to continue the fight for freedom. He revived the Indian National Army. Netaji named the regiments of INA after Gandhi, Nehru, Maulana Azad. There was also an all-women regiment named after Rani of Jhansi, Lakshmi Bai. Under Netaji's leadership, INA drew prisoners of war and thousands of civil volunteers. Bose wished to free India with the help of Japanese forces by fighting together against the British Empire. When British forces captured the Malay Peninsula, Bose chose not to surrender and planned to continue the fight from Manchuria with the aim to get support from Soviet Union. While going to Manchuria, his plane crashed. There is a controversy regarding the death of Bose. The Japanese aircraft in which Netaji was traveling on 18th August 1945 crashed and Bose reportedly suffered severe burns. According to some reports, he died in a nearby Japanese hospital. It is believed that his body was cremated and his ashes were interred in the Renkoji Temple in Tokyo. Though there is a dispute if the ashes interred in the temple are indeed his. This has given rise to many theories that Bose may have survived the crash. Bose was described as Patriot of Patriots by Gandhiji. His voice continues to instill patriotism. I do not know how many of us who are going to participate in the coming battle will survive to see India free. But whether we survive or not, whether we individually live to see India free or not, we are confident that India shall be free. 18th August is also the birth anniversary of Vijay Lakshmi Pandit. She was a politician and diplomat who holds the distinctions of being the first Indian woman to hold a cabinet post in pre-independent India and also the first woman president of the United Nations General Assembly. That brings us to the end of this episode of Azadi Ka Safar, AIR News Ke Sang. See you in the... And with that, we end the midday news.